yeah i think we are live now okay thank you thank you mohammed uh, so uh, good morning everyone I, uh, today i'll be presenting our work uh, which was published at uh, micro 2022 uh, the work is called flash cosmos uh, uh, in flash bulk bitwise operations using uh, inherent computation capability of nand flash memory uh, so this was done uh, this work was done in collaboration with safari at eth zurich and uh, universities in uh, korea and also the research institute at uh, montpellier so uh, let's quickly move, jump to the executive summary so uh, the background uh, coming to the background uh, bulk bitwise operations are uh, widely used in many important uh, data intensive applications for example databases uh, cryptography graph processing uh, the main challenge with uh, performing bulk bitwise operations is uh, that in traditional systems uh, these operations are uh, bottlenecked by the data movement between the storage and the compute unit and in uh, in mod some of the uh, novel techniques like in, in flash processing the data sensing uh, is is one of the key bottlenecks because it uh, the the operands have to be read in serial and it also uh, in in flash processing techniques uh, the the main challenge is also the reliability which is quite low because the operation is performed within the flash uh, within the ssd or within the uh, storage device so our goal is uh, in this work is to improve uh, the performance energy efficiency and reliability of uh, bulk bitwise operations in in flash processing and uh, to this end we propose uh, flash cosmos which is flash computation with one shot multi operand sensing and uh, this is a in flash processing technique that uh, improves the performance energy efficiency and reliability using two key techniques one is called uh, multi word line sensing which enables uh, uh, multi operand bulk bitwise operations with a single sensing operation which is a single read operation and we also uh, have enhanced slc mode programming to improve the reliability where it increases the voltage margin between the erased and the programmed states to uh, provide higher reliability and uh, in terms of key results uh, flash cosmos was evaluated using 160 real 3d nand flash chips and uh, three real world uh, workloads and it provides up to 3.5 times and 3.3 times uh, performance and energy efficiency improvement over uh, prior state of the art ifp technique while also providing high reliability so uh, if you have any uh, questions at any point please stop me uh, uh, so let's quickly jump to the motivation so bulk bitwise operations are uh, present everywhere in all kinds of applications like as i mentioned databases web search cryptography genome analysis uh yeah so this is this is a very widely used uh, these are widely used across all these domains and the key challenge with performing bulk bitwise operations in traditional systems is that data movement between the compute units and the memory hierarchy significantly affects the performance of these operations so let's look at how uh, what is the data movement that we are talking about so in in conventional systems uh, you will have a host processor cpu or a gpu and uh, you have a main memory and and storage and uh, these are uh, this is how the data movement uh, happens uh, the store uh, so so when when we perform a read from a storage device it comes to the main memory and then it goes to the host processor and the computation is performed there and you can see that the the bandwidth of these uh, devices are uh, the storage device is around uh, 8 gigabits per second in uh, in uh, state of the art ssds and the main memory bandwidth is around uh, tens to hundreds of uh, gbs uh, per second and uh, so once the computation is performed it uh, the write happens to the main memory and back to the storage device so uh, here we see that the bandwidth of the storage uh, external io bandwidth of the storage device is quite low which is 8 G gbps and this is uh, the main bottleneck uh, so so the external io bandwidth of the storage is the main bottleneck so how do we uh, improve this 
So one option is to look at near data processing. Near data processing is one of the uh, one of the new uh, uh, improvements that uh, uh, we are seeing in uh, in main memory systems or in storage systems. So uh, where the computation is actually moved to where the data is located. And uh, so here we have a few works which already look at near data processing. And we have uh, something called compute cache in, uh, in the cache hierarchy. And we have uh, in SRAM caches. In uh, DRAM based main memory, we have Ambit from Safari. And then uh, in NVM based main memory, we have a work called Peanut Tubo. And in, in, in storage processing, we have something called Biscuit, which is performs bulk bitwise operations in, in storage. And we have Parabit, which, is, uh, which performs in flash processing. And these are all works which have been published at top conferences. So I would encourage people to go and look at these works. So our focus is to look at these two areas, which is in flash and in storage processing, where, uh, where the challenge is that large data sets cannot fit into the main memory. And how do we solve, uh, how do we improve, uh, improve the uh, performance and energy efficiency in, in these two, in, in a, these areas? So let's look at uh, in storage processing. So in in storage processing, uh, we use a in storage computation unit uh, within the storage device. And the, and the computation happens uh, in that, uh, using that computation unit. And so let's look at the the uh, the same figure that we saw earlier. So we have a host processor and a main memory and a storage device. So uh, again, so where the data movement happens like this. So the data actually um, get uh, is moved from the the NAND chips where the data is actually stored to the in storage computation unit, and uh, the computation happens within the storage. And only the result is transferred to the main memory and the and the host processor. So similarly, when we when uh, the host processor you uh, uses this data, it writes it back whenever it's required to the to the NAND flash. So the the main challenge is that we have we have uh, reduced the data movement because the computation happens within the storage device, but it's still uh, there is a there is a, a lot of data movement happening between the NAND flash chips and the in storage computation unit, and that becomes the new bottleneck um, in the in this system. And you can also see that the internal bandwidth of the SSD is around nine point six Gbps. So so this is the new bottleneck. So um, as I said, the storage internal I/O bandwidth is the main bottleneck for data movement. Now to improve this uh, system, we uh, people have moved on to in-flash processing where uh, the computation happens within the flash chips um, as the data operands are being read serially. So, uh, so IFP reduces the data movement between the in-storage computation unit and the NAND flash chips. So uh, let's see how that is done. So again, we, we look at the same figure. We but the main difference here is that the computation happens within the NAND flash chips. Um, and then the result is only transferred to the in storage computation unit. And, and the data movement happens uh, to the host CPU as we saw earlier. So, so the main uh, advantage with this, this kind of an approach is that we perform the computation within the, the flash chips and only the result that we need to transfer to the host uh, system need, will be uh, moved from the storage device to the uh, host system. So this is uh, this is one of the key advantages. But even in I, in flash processing, we have a, a bottleneck which is the data sensing. So let's let's see what um, what this data sensing bottleneck is. As I said, IFP fundamentally mitigates the data movement. So. Um, so when we see a, a in, when we see a storage unit, we see an in storage computation unit and and several NAND flash chips. So if we see a NAND flash chip, we see um, that there are a number of pages which can which are uh, used to store data, and there is all there is also a page buffer where uh, which is uh, basically used to uh, uh, read read or write uh, from the host, and uh, that uh, so. 
So the basic idea of this is that the bulk in bulk bitwise operations, the operands are stored in each of these pages. And whenever the operands are read, it actually gets uh, is read first to the page buffer and then moved to the uh, the host uh, system, moved out outside the storage. So uh, so what is the data sensing bottleneck in IFP? So here the the main bottleneck is that the operands are read one by one uh, in a very serial manner. So you can see that if we want to perform an AND operation, the operand A should be read first and then the operand B and um, within the flash chip, the AND operation is performed. And if, if we read another operand, then uh, you can, um, it also gets read serially and then the, uh, the result is computed within the page buffer. So this is a this is a, a bottleneck if the number of operands are large, and um, if the number of operands is, is is in the tens order of tens or hundreds. So you need to uh, we need to perform the the read in a serial manner, and uh, the reads are are expensive operations. So so serial data sensing is is the bottleneck in prior in flash processing techniques. There is also another challenge, which is the reliability issue in, in flash processing. So in uh, some of the prior techniques, uh, as we saw, the, the operands are being read serially, but the because the, the prior techniques in, in, in flash processing cannot leverage the ECC and the data randomization, uh, uh, which is typically used in the storage systems to make the operations more reliable. Uh, these these two uh, techniques cannot be leveraged because the operation is happening within the flash chips and uh, ECC unit is is typically located outside the the flash chip. So uh, this is a main challenge in uh, some of the prior techniques. So let's say uh, an operand A uh, has multiple uh, bit flips uh, or error bits in the in uh, in the page. And uh, we see uh, some of some uh, error bits in operand B as well. So when the data sensing is happening, or when we read the read these pages to perform bulk bitwise operations, we see that the error bits are uh, retained or even compounded in some cases to uh, in the in the result. And when we perform an AND operation, we can see that all these error bits are retained. In a in a traditional system, it would actually go to the ECC and then uh, will be the error bits will be corrected using the uh, ECC mechanism. So this is a this is another challenge in um, uh, with prior IFP techniques that the reliability is not so high, and this requires the that the application be highly error tolerant. So if the application can uh, accommodate such uh, Error errors in its uh, uh, in its operation, then it can actually use some of these techniques. So our goal in this work is to actually address these bottleneck the bottleneck of um, the performance and energy efficiency bottleneck of uh, prior IFP techniques, uh, which is mostly the serial sensing of operands, and also make in flash processing more reliable. So so. Th for, uh, to this end, we actually uh, propose Flash Cosmos, and uh, here, what uh, in in our work, what we do is we actually perform computation on multiple operands using a single sensing operation. So let's see how that works. So while doing the uh, reading or data sensing of uh, multiple operands, we see that all of them can be uh, read at the same time, and the result gets uh, accumulated in, in the page buffer. Uh, at in one shot, so this is what we are trying to achieve in uh, in our uh, in our work, and uh, this we but we also need to make it as uh, highly reliable as possible because we see we have seen already that there are uh, the error bits can get uh, can affect the operation um, the bulk bitwise operations, so. Uh, so let's look at some background. Now that we have seen our uh, goal and what we want to propose, uh, we'll see a bit of background on uh, how this can be how this can be achieved. So uh, some background on a uh, on NAND flash uh, basics, and uh, here in a let's look at a flash cell. 
and a flash cell actually stores data by adjusting the amount of charge in the cell. So if if there is no charge in the cell, then we we call that as an erase cell, and uh, because it has low charge, and a program cell will have um, a, a charge in it, and it is basically uh, we have programmed it with uh, a threshold voltage. And we we call if it's if the cell is programmed, then we call it uh, the value is zero. And when we activate uh, the uh, the NAND flash cell, if if it's if the cell is erased, then we uh, it operates as a resistor. And if the cell is programmed, then it operates as an open switch. So by activation, we mean that uh, there is a process of sending a current sending current through the bit line, and uh, we we'll look at that in the next slide. So, so let's look at what is an AND string. So, these uh, a set of flash cells are basically serially connected to form an AND string. So, it it is connected in this in this particular uh, manner, and it's also con these these cells are connected to a bit line, which is uh, which activates each of these bits, and. Uh, so this is called an AND string, which which we will use in our uh, in our proposal. And if if we have to read this NAND string, uh, if we have to let's say read only one cell in this NAND string, these non-target cells um, act act as a resistor during when when it's when they are activated. So uh, because of the high pass-through voltage that we supply to these uh, these cells. Um, like we have seen in some of the background lectures that uh, over the past few weeks, and uh, if so, this is the target cell that we want to read. And if uh, as as we have seen, if it is um, um, the, if it is erased, if it's in array state, then we it acts as a resistor, and if it's in programmed state, it acts as an open switch. So when we pass a bit line current through this bit line, if if there is all of the cells act as resistors then the current actually flows through the the bit uh, nand string and there is a sensing circuit at the uh, in for the bit line which will detect it as a one so similarly if if we see there is a if a cell is not is uh, programmed and uh, this acts as an open switch when it's activated uh, and when bit line current is passed through this, um, it treats it as a zero because the the current cannot pass through an open switch, and it gets blocked. And uh, the sensing logic would actually detect it as a zero. So let's look at what is a NAND flash block. So uh, NAND flash block is a series of uh, these NAND strings uh, uh, which are connected to different bit lines. Uh, which are basically uh, containing uh, hundreds of cells, and uh, this will be uh, blocks. So be, there will be multiple bit lines, and uh, each bit line will have an AND string. And we also introduced the concept of uh, and this is a, this is an existing concept, which is word line, where uh, cells which are connected to different bit lines are are uh, connected in a horizontal direction. And this is called a word line. And uh, so a single word line actually controls a large number of flash cells uh, in the in the horizontal direction. And this gives us a high bit level parallelism. And uh, if we have to look at uh, the block organization, so we, we saw uh, how a block is organized in, in uh, NAND flash. So a number of uh, blocks actually uh, share the same bit lines. So you can see that uh, these are, these bit lines are connected across different blocks. So one uh, key observation that we have is that uh, so the, when we look at a block, um, the NAND string actually looks like um, it's very similar to a digital AND logic. Uh, which is at uh, if you look at a two input and uh, simple two input and circuit uh, logic circuit then you see that these two transistors are connected in series and uh, you get the and operation uh, here so this is similar to the the way the 
the transistors uh, or the cells are uh, organized in a in an AND string. And similarly, if we look at uh, um, cells which are connected across different blocks, we also observe that we uh, it is it's very similar to a digital OR logic because here the the cells are basically uh, connected in parallel. Uh, or the transistors are connected in the par in parallel in, in a or operation in an or circuit and we can see th see that this this is also uh, very similar in the nand flash uh, um, uh, array so so with these two key observations we want to um, um, we want to propose our uh, work so which is called flash cosmos so in flash cosmos as we saw in the in the motivation we uh, the main uh, bottleneck with prior in flash processing techniques is that it has to perform serial sensing of data and which we want to improve by performing multi, uh, sensing of bulk bitwise operations on multiple operands with a single sensing operation and uh, so so this is, we call it as a multi word line sensing operation um, in multi-word line sensing, uh, what we do is uh, there are two types of operations. One is called an intra-block multi-word line sensing operation, and there is an inter-block MWS operation. So in intra-block, we look at uh, a sensing operation within a block. And uh, this actually helps us in performing an AND operation because as we saw, um, AND operation looks like looks very similar to the way cells are organized in an AND string. And this will help us in uh, performing uh, bitwise AND operations uh, on the, of the data that is, to, that is stored in these cells, in these word lines. So how do we do that? We actually simultaneously activate multiple word lines in the same block. So this is our uh, key proposal where uh, so let's let's see. Uh, I mean, there are some non-target cells which act as uh, resistors, and uh, if you see, uh, these are the the target cells. And based on the the state of the cell, whether it's programmed or erased, it it basically be, uh, behaves like an uh, like a resistor or an open switch. So uh, so cells which are programmed have uh, behave as an as an open switch, and cells which are erased act as a resistor. So when we actually perform uh, a multi-word line sensing operation or simultaneously activating all these word lines, we see that, uh, let's take an example of this uh, particular uh, bit line. So when we pass a bit line current through this, and when we activate all these uh, word lines simultaneously, we see that, uh, there is an open switch. There are two open switches here, and the bit line cannot bit line current cannot pass through this. So the sensing logic would actually uh, sense this as a zero because it cannot uh, it cannot detect the current passing through the the NAND string. Similarly, if we look at this, if we look at bit line two, there is a, an open switch which which makes it um, which makes the current can, uh, not pass through the NAND string. And uh, this is the same case with bit line three, but in bit line four, when all of them are resistors, the the bit line current passes through the NAND string, and this uh, will be detected as one. So what we are seeing is that the operation actually depends on whether there is an open switch uh, in the uh, in the NAND string. So by open switch we mean zero, and if there is a zero, then the the result is actually detected as, detected as a zero. So which is similar to the output operation of a and a bitwise and. So if if uh, if you perform multiple uh, bitwise and operation on multiple operands, and if there is a single zero in the one of the operands, then it did the result would be a zero. So if if we want and want the result to be one, then all of them have all the cells have to be uh as how to uh, behave like resistors or have one value in uh, stored in them so this is uh, this is for about the bitwise and operation so as i mentioned that the bit line reads as one only when all the target cells store one so so as as we as i said that if there is any um, 
um, open switch in the circuit, then it actually detects it as a zero. So uh, intra block MWS actually enables between bitwise and of multiple pages in the same block whereas a single uh, sensing operation. Now let's look at inter block MWS. As we saw uh, inter block, uh, we, we can see parallels between uh, digital or logic and uh, cells which are connected across different blocks. So for performing an OR operation, we use something called interblock MWS, where we simultaneously activate multiple word lines in different blocks. So here the, we see that there are multiple blocks and uh, there are word lines in each, many word lines in each block. So what we do here is we activate uh, one word line in each block. Um, so when we par when we simultaneously activate um, different word lines in each block, we can see that even if there is a open switch, uh, if there is a resistor in uh, one of the, uh, let's say one of the uh, word lines in a block, then the current could pass through the, the NAND string and the sensing circuit would detect that. So we see that if if there are two two resistors in the NAND string, or if the cells behave as resistors in in uh, the NAND string across different blocks, we see that uh, the result would be one, which means that the the current could pass through the NAND string, and the sensing circuit detects that. If if there is uh, one resistor and an open switch, then the current can still pass through one of the um, the NAND string and the, uh, the sensing logic would still detect that, which means that if there is a zero and a one, the output would, uh, the result would still be a one. So we see that this is also similar in bit line three and in bit line four, there are two open switches, which means that the current cannot pass through either one of them and the result would be zero. So this is the uh, key idea of the interblock MWS operation. And uh, so the so the bit line reads as a zero only when all the target cells uh, store zero, and this is equivalent to the bit line bitwise or operation uh, of all the target cells. So uh, yeah, so this is just another example with multiple operands. Okay, so. Uh, so Flash Cosmos with interblock MWS enables bitwise OR of multiple pages in different blocks via a single sensing operation. So uh, we have seen, uh, so far we have seen AND operation and OR operation being performed within the, the Flash uh, chip uh, with AND operation being performed within one block and, uh, and OR operation is performed across different blocks. So we, we can also support other bitwise operations. Uh, so we, we, we support bitwise not operation by exploiting the inverse read operation, which is already supported in modern and flash memory chips for copyback operations. So, so we, we also support bitwise NAND and NOR basically by exploiting De Morgan's operation, De Morgan's loss. So if we uh, store the inverse data of uh, inverse data and perform an OR operation, we can perform, we can get the NAND operation and vice versa. And similarly, when we, uh, with bitwise XNOR and XOR and XNOR, there is a XOR, uh, basically NAND flash um, chips support XOR operation between the sensing latch and the cache latch. Uh, so there are two uh, latches. Sensing latch is also called the is also part of the page buffer. So there are many sensing latches in the page buffer, and there is also a cache buffer which has these latches. Or uh, so XOR sub operation is supported between these two latches, and this can be uh, leveraged to perform bitwise X XOR or XNOR. So. Uh, so we have seen in Flash Cosmos that we can actually perform um, bulk bitwise operation uh, on multiple operands with a single sensing operation. Now, um, we saw that in prior IFP techniques, there is a problem with the reliability because the data is not sent through an ECC module. 
to correct the bit error, bit flips or the bit errors. So we need to actually look uh, improve the reliability of in flash bulk bitwise operations. And we do this by a technique called enhanced SLC mode programming. Um, if you have any questions uh, so far, I, I'll be happy to take it. Uh, so in enhanced uh, SLC mode programming, so SLC mode programming is, uh, uh, so the cells, there are multiple, uh, there are different types of cells. There is SLC, uh, T MLC and TLC, which we have seen in the background lectures. So SLC mode programming already provides a large voltage margin between the programmed and array states. And uh, so you can see that this is an SLC, uh, the distribution of a S, uh, SLC uh, a cell or a SLC word line. And you can see that there is a sufficient uh, distance between uh, a voltage margin between the array state and the programmed state, cells which are there in the array state and the programmed states. So, but we have performed some real device characterization in this in this work. We have, uh, and based on that, we see that SLC mode programming is still highly error prone without the use of ECC and data randomization technique. So, uh, yeah. So to to improve that, what we do is we want to create a wider voltage margin between the two states, which is the array state and the programmed state. And uh, in order to do that, we actually increase the voltage margin between the array state and the program states. So we see that the program state has a much higher thresh, uh, threshold voltage. And uh, the difference, the voltage margin between the array and the program states is higher now. And how do we do that is, is basically by adding extra steps to the uh, ISPP programming uh, mechanism. And um, by doing that, uh, we actually uh, improve the reliability of in-flash computation without the use of ECC or data randomization technique. The key idea of this kind of a, of, of a larger old, uh, voltage margin is that even with many disturbances, uh, we, we don't see that the, the two states are getting close to each other and uh, the read uh, getting bit, uh, error bits. So if uh, so, the disturbances cannot affect these two affect the uh, the program state and the array state. So actually, this kind of a technique can be used to improve the reliability of prior in flash processing techniques as well. So so how do we achieve this uh, these uh, two key ideas? Uh, so basically, we have introduced uh, new NAND commands. And uh, there are three new NAND commands to support Flash Cosmos. One is called, uh, one we uh, already discussed is called MWS, multi word line sensing. And there is ESP as well, which is to support the uh, enhanced SLC mode programming. And we also have, um, we can also set the XOR operation for uh, performing XOR between the sensing latch and the cache latch. So uh, MWS supports uh, intra and interblock MWS, and it can also uh, perform uh, help in performing inverse read operation and accumulation of the results in all the of all the reads. Then there is something called ISCM slot, which basically uh, performs uh, allows us to uh, control uh, four features. One is to uh, control the inverse read mode. We can either perform inverse read mode or a regular read mode, and uh, the initialization of these two two latches, and to move the data between the S latch and the C latch. And ESP works very similar to a regular program command, and the XOR command performs bitwise XOR between the sensing and the cache latch. So, let's look at an operation where. Uh, where we have to perform bitwise operation, uh, bulk bitwise operation on multiple operands. So you see, we see that uh, there is a, a, a long equation where uh, this has to be resolved in Flash Cosmos. So what we do is we break this equation into two parts. One, we, one is we look at this C1 plus C3 and D2 plus D4. And we look at A1 plus um, this, this uh, sub part of the equation. So 
all these operands are stored in uh, different blocks in the in the NAND flash uh, array. So A gets stored in uh, block one, and similarly B, C, and D are stored in block two, three, and four. So when we have to perform one part of the equation, which is C1 plus C3 and D2 plus D4, what we do is we use De Morgan's law as, as I uh, mentioned earlier, and we actually perform, um, we store the inverse data of C1 and C3 and D2 and D4 to perform the, uh, the R operation uh, using uh, uh, interblock, uh, intra, uh, intra-block MWS. So, so to do that, we uh, store the inverse operation and we perform an intra-block MWS for C1 plus C3 and D2 plus, uh, D2 plus D4 by enabling the inverse read mode and initialization of the sensing and cache latches. So you can see the, the bit set in the ISCM and this will tell us that the initialization is performed. Now, in order to perform the second, the first part of the uh, equation, what we do is we again want to perform an intra-block MWS because that's that's uh, less expensive compared to an interblock MWS. And uh, we do that by disabling the inverse read mode and the initialization of both, both, both latches. The initialization of both latches actually help in accumulating the data in the sensing and the cache latch. So, uh, so this, this is what just what I mentioned just now. So this is uh, this is how we do the uh, take an ex take a bitwise operation and uh, implement that in Flash Cosmos. So, uh, any do you have any questions so far? Uh, Mohammed, are there any questions in YouTube or something? Okay, so let's uh, quickly move to the evaluation. So, uh, we evaluate Flash Cosmos using uh, two kinds of evaluation. One is we use uh, 160 real uh, state-of-the-art 3D NAND Flash chips to, uh, to evaluate the, the feasibility and the reliability of Flash Cosmos. And uh, to do that, we, uh, we basically use 160 48 layer 3D TLC NAND flash chips. And we test around uh, 3 million word lines uh, where we store the data and uh, perform bitwise operations. And this is, uh, this real device characterization happens in, uh, in under worst case operating conditions, which is basically one year retention time at 10K P cycles. So this means that we perform 10,000 uh, 10, P cycles and uh, we, uh, we we basically uh, test the retention of the data for one year and we also use worst case data patterns to uh, test the feasibility of flash cosmos and uh, the results of this kind of, this evaluation shows us that both intra block and inter block mws requires no changes to the cell array of commodity and flash chips and uh, both MWS operations can activate multiple word lines. Uh, so in an intra-block op MWS operation, we can activate up to uh, 48 word lines. And in an inter-block operation, we can activate up to four word lines uh, across different blocks. And this comes at a small increase in uh, sensing latency, which is less than 10%. And ESP also significantly improves the reliability of uh, computation results. And with ESP and uh, without the use of randomization and ECC techniques, we observed that uh, there is no, there are no bit errors in the tested flash cells. Now, uh, we also evaluate Flash Cosmos using uh, three real world uh, applications that perform bulk bitwise operations. And, um, in this evaluation, what we do is we use a simulator, uh, which is MQSIM, which is the state of the art simulator to model the performance of Flash Cosmos and the baselines. And we use uh, the three different workloads. Uh, one is called the bitmap indices, which is, uh, which actually in the workload performs bitwise and on up to 
thousand operands and uh, we have image segmentation workload which actually performs bitwise and on three operands but on very large operands and we have a cake leak star listing uh, workload which has bitwise which performs bitwise or on up to 32 operands and the baselines are basically uh, outside storage processing uh, which is the conventional way of uh, performing bitwise operations and for this we use a multi core cpu and we have an in storage processing technique uh, which is modeled in the simulator and that uses an in storage hardware accelerator and we also model the state of the art ifp technique which is parabit and so the results of uh, this evaluation shows us that uh, we have uh, we we show the speed up uh, of all these techniques uh, normalized to outside storage processing and we also show the energy benefit of isp parabit and flash cosmos over osp and we see, we have uh, we show the average results for each of these workloads so we see that flash cosmos actually improves the or improves the performance by uh, up to 25 times over uh, isp and uh, 3.5 times over uh, parabit and in terms of energy efficiency we we see that uh, uh, flash cosmos improves uh, energy efficiency by 3.3 times over parabit and 13.4 uh, times over uh, isp so uh, flash cosmos provides significant performance and energy benefits over the baselines and uh, this these benefits will, will only increase if the number of operands are higher and uh, we'll get higher performance and energy benefits so um, so this is uh, the link to the paper and i would encourage people to uh, go and read uh, the some of the other key results and uh, the insights that we have provided in the paper so before I jump to summary, uh, if you have any questions, we can discuss that. Okay. So, uh, Flash Cosmos is, is the first work to enable multi operand bulk bitwise operations with a single sensing operation, and, uh, and it also provides high reliability and it improves the performance uh, by up to 3.5 times over the state of the art ifp technique and it improves energy efficiency by up to 3.3 times over uh, the state of the art ifp technique across different workloads and it comes at a very low cost uh, and uh, requires no changes to the flash cell arrays um, yeah so this is uh, this is the summary of our work and uh, that marks the end of my presentation so um, yeah please uh, let me know if you have any questions now thanks a lot rakesh any questions Thank you, Jacob. Okay, so if there is no questions, I think uh, we can wrap up uh, today's meeting. Uh, I'm going to stop uh, live streaming. Thanks everyone for joining. <laughs>